Your readings, Flesh Wound Horror Freaks, and welcome to Flesh Wound Horror Live. I am Flesh Wound Dan, joined by Producer Todd. How goes it, Producer Todd? I'm chilling. And someone else hopefully joining us later. We'll see. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah. What have you been up to? I know you're fresh from the movies. Yes, saw a non review film. Maybe I'll talk about it if we need to stall later. Okay. <laughs> Okay, cool, cool. I'm getting ready tomorrow. I'm seeing. I couldn't time them out, so I'm kind of pissed. But uh, Sasquatch, Sunset, and Abigail. So we'll get to review those. Uh, what did I time out? I timed out next week. We got Abigail, Ministry of Unhealthy Welfare, and then Sasquatch Sunset. Unhealth. Uh, oh, the the war movie. Yeah, the Guy Ritchie. Yeah, that looked pretty solid. I don't know if I'll get to it, but uh, that looks solid. I'm pretty excited for Sasquatch Sunset. Actually, a little bit more than Abigail for some reason. I'm checking my expectations on that one. Sa- a Sasquatch? Yeah. I think it might just be more of a weird experience than something that I'm really going to end up loving. But I'm in for it. So I'm just going in low expectations. Hopefully it surprises me. Yeah. It's not a horror movie. I mean. Yeah. Well, um, that doesn't but make it looks difference. interesting. Hey. <laughs> I'm a big Sasquatch guy. I'm happy you give me some Sasquatch action. I'm good. Uh, it won't be any Night of the Demon. I don't think any dicks. Are well, I mean, the trailer off. doesn't really give us really much other than the, the other than the Sasquatch uh, murder in cheeks. I mean, really? yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm interested to see where it goes. So I, I don't know. That's why I'm trying to check my expectations. <laughs> Maybe P Diddy's one of them. You know, just I don't know he's doing the murder in or well that kind of murder and i don't know how that works yeah i don't know about this but... abigail the other one the little <laughs> chucky girl i did enjoy i'm not sure about this vampire one <laughs> that movie looks okay i know some people are just absolutely stoked but i'm like eh, i don't know no, I, vampire I, ballerina I, we'll see it's we'll like see. Dracula's I don't know. daughter well we'll we'll have some some uh dracula action later tonight I was gonna say, yeah, and yeah. His daughter. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. What up, Punisher? Anybody that I missed? How's it going? Um, I'm just gonna say, yeah, we're probably gonna talk Sasquatch Sunset next next week. We haven't even started our lineup, but I'm just gonna say, yeah, we'll talk about it. And Abigail, yeah. obviously. Yeah, we'll throw those in. There's our non horror one next week. There you go, <laughs> Sasquatch Sunset done. <laughs> we're actually gonna kick uh, off with our non horror one today, but I don't know if we're there yet. Huh? I said we're actually kicking off non horror today, so but right. I'm not rushing us to yeah. get there. I'm just I'm just mes- men- mentioning. I I mean, yeah, I was gonna say I I guess you could put it in that genre somewhat, but uh, but it's yeah, not no, a not. Film. I don't think you can. Nah, but eh, it's scary, I suppose. But uh, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm excited. So we did get some bad news though. Uh, Quentin Tarantino's final film which i still don't really buy but his uh final film has been canceled it's no longer going to be that movie critic movie the the one that it was supposed to have wasn't it supposed to have joe spinell where, where is where is cliff booth when we need him i all of that stuff that they were talking about has apparently been scrapped so that movie is a no-go uh, i mean i don't know what else he's doing instead I'd love to hear what the breakdown is for why he scrapped it. I don't. Did he scrap it or did the studio? I believe he scrapped it. Tarantino's got pretty strong creative control. I believe it was just him; just wasn't going to do it. Um, well, he might have found something he wanted to do better. I don't know. I, I'm bummed. I was really looking. For, you know what? If if we get once upon a time in Hollywood too, I'll take that. I just want more of them. <laughs> I, I've said it from the beginning. I would give anything to see it go into the 80s. Yep. He's They're making like Fred Olin Ray, B-Monster well, movies. See, here's the thing, though. He <laughs> he said last movie. Doesn't mean he couldn't go do te- like television. He's already kind of talked about that, too. Yeah, I, oh, I and suppose. It, and it gives him more time. Like he could do, you know, a three-part movie that's six hours. And no one's gonna blink an eye if it's on a, a streamer. So yeah, yeah, I guess like, that's true. Mini series. 
Well, I, mean, I know, he, like, what was it after uh, Hateful Eight? He was already kind of getting that that idea because mm-hmm. they there is that four volume version that's expanded. So uh-huh. I I think that's when he kind of like you know that that side of the medium. So technically not movies. So no, I I could totally see him doing something like a Shogun sort of mini series, and that's kind of his next go to. Let's see this uh, stuff. Yes, can. See, that's the only thing that makes me sad. We're not going to see a Spinel character. <laughs> who plays this? Who plays Spinel? Who steps in those shoes? There's nobody. Well, it says Spinel character. You could find an act. Yeah, it's possible to have someone pretend. It's Just AI character. Spinel? I mean. I actually think you can cast someone. <laughs> Orc, where the fuck is Mikey and Pugs? Uh, Kruger will be joining us in pro- progress. Um, Pugs is off enslaved right now. Probably shouldn't use that one. <laughs> That's fucked up, Todd. He he's uh he's uh yeah, it's his busy season. We'll go with that. Yeah, see, Tarantino yeah. already has plans for a TV series. Yeah, I know it's been talked about. Kruger's got a lot of like mass uh devastation that he's planning right now. You know, he's got Mosh Pit Mike, he's you know, got to destroy JD Horror and all these Imagine different people. Almost 10 years in the making. Exactly. The same exactly. match, same stipulations. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to their first and one at UEW Sovereign of Slaughter One was was something. So I can't wait to see what they do. Under the uh, I forget the name exactly. Under the Crimson Sea Death Match. Did I yes. get it right? There you go. There you go. There's gonna be some fucked up shit in that match. So if you like blood and creative ways to rip people's flesh. Don't miss that one. And Mosh Pit Mike on April 27th. Yeah, we'll have Kruger talk about it, that one at the end, too. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just just back to the Tarantino thing. I, I don't know. Maybe that just wasn't the one. Like, if he's dead set on it being his final movie, maybe the script he didn't think was up to stuff. Uh, Cliff Booth, perhaps the gravity of this being... Uh, his self-imposed last movie is causing him to feel the pressure of delivering something worthwhile. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I can't imagine it was going to suck, but maybe, you know, you want to go out on a high note. Maybe he's like, you know what? I don't feel like this is going to be as good as once upon a time in Hollywood. But See, that's the thing though. I think he would be better off and not making his 10th movie, then moving on. Do the series now. Then when you feel like you have the script and you have that final movie, do it. Then. Just, yeah, you don't have to wait. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for a TV series. So. Yeah, I'm down for it. I mean, that's uh, uh, Jason Statham is apparently moving towards that. Uh, Nicholas Cage, at least hinted that he wants to move towards that. What up, Steve, by the way, if I missed oh, you. What up? Um, yeah, I, 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 a lot of people just, that's what they want to do. I think it's a shame with Nick Cage, but we'll see if that's an, even going to happen. I I don't believe Nick Cage will stop making movies. I don't know. I, don't, I, I can't picture him in a series. I don't know what, I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see it, but, uh, but, uh. Steve wants his last film to be a Star Trek film. So I'm a big Star Trek guy, Steve, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about like. He might be able to make it cool, Dan. And there you go. That's all you. (laughs) Fuck you, Todd. I don't, uh, I don't know how I feel about like Captain Kirk using the N word all the time. Like it just, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Let's see. Cliff says he's, I uh, wanted to go out with a smaller scale movie like he did with Jackie Brown after Pulp Fiction. Yeah, smaller doesn't necessarily mean it's not great. So <laughs> I always thought he'd make another Kill Bill. I always thought he'd make another Kill Bill. I don't know about Star Trek, but I would be down for Quentin Tarantino just like that rumor wanna... about making a Friday the 13th. I don't Why want to. Not? I don't. I don't need another Kill Bill. Those are the Tarantino films I revisit the least, if I'm honest. I think there's it's set up though for a follow up with Vivica Fox. It's daughter. set up. It's set up, but it doesn't need to be. It. it I. I think 
If it wasn't his film, I'd say cool. Give us if it wasn't one more cool, give us that. But yeah, he, he could still do a chapter three in fucking television form too if he really wanted to. He could. He could also do another Django. Like, there's plenty of. Well, I definitely don't want his last film to be a sequel. I don't. No. Well, shit. They were talking about a Reservoir Dogs remake at one point. He's I see that. I would forth. almost. I would see that's different. That's like a whole filmmaking thing, like starting and ending to see the differences he do. But that's more of like a an experiment than an actual movie. You know, I, like I'd be curious to see what he'd do doing Reservoir Dogs right now. But I wouldn't want it to be his last movie. It's like the Psycho. It's an experiment. You don't know how it's going to turn out. You think he'd be cool producing and then passing the reins to some different people, letting them do his scripts, maybe? I don't need a bunch of Robert Rodriguez, Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. Seeing. I'd like to just see him tackle. He looks so cheap. That's my problem. <laughs> tackle st- Great genre stuff, or do a Polizio Teschi Euro crime flick. Like, there, there's a lot that he hasn't touched that I'd like. I to want see his about. last film to be a Russ Meyer style film. That's how you make me happy. <laughs> Uma, <laughs> you're gonna need a boob job. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Uma, you're just not busty enough for this one. <laughs> We're gonna get Samuel Jackson in there somehow, but uh, you're just not bust. <laughs> Brian Trash does do hardcore porn. Four, four rooms too. Yeah, that would be great for an appetizer. Oh man, you must you have to really love feet. You're not gonna even see the girl naked. It's just gonna be her feet the entire time. <laughs> it's gonna be. Lo- <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Enough of that nonsense. Let's move on and tackle our first movie of the evening, which is a big one, a really big one, from director, writer Alex Garland, Civil War, from A24. And in this film, a journey across a dystopian future America following a team of military-embedded journalists as they race against time to reach D.C. before rebel factions to descend upon the White House. Um, All right. So, Todd, we've been waiting a long time for this one. And, uh, well, I'll get your thoughts first, because I'm kind of curious. We've avoided talking about it too much. So, like, what's your impressions? Like, was it what you thought it was going to be first? Because I know a lot of people had different opinions on what this would end up being. I wasn't sure. I didn't think we were going to get exactly what we got in the trailers, and we didn't really get exactly what we got in the trailers, but we also kind of did. Um, I know what people are expecting and didn't get. This is very much similar to The Purge. You were set up with a concept and delivered a different movie. And I think that's why there's so much... It feels like there's a lot of negativity around it. It's a road picture. I I enjoyed it for that. It's honestly... It's, it's not too far off from the fucking... Was it the last Purge movie? It, it, it has a similar. Oh, it's. I'm not. I'm not comparing them. I'm That's like them. you might as well just say it fucking sucked. No, no, no. I no, no, am comparing it. I'm to saying that. the look and it, and the feel. Well, the look, I should say. I don't know, but no. um, it was. It, yeah, I I I get why people had their issues, but I thought it was a really good road picture, and I I thought. It was. It, it's obvious. It's on the nose. It's you kind of know where everything's going. You didn't. I don't think it's on the nose at all. You don't think? It's I think the... that's no. I think that's uh, not the take that I have of the movie at all. I mean, obviously, going in, everybody thought like, "Oh, this is going to be political propaganda." I, I, I have a couple criticisms, but uh, I mean, I love the movie. I thought the movie was fantastic. Uh, it's not about. So people are mad that this movie kind of refuses to to take a side. Like it it doesn't really at all. I mean, we see both of these factions, although there's technically multiple factions, like doing some fucked up shit. It's more a movie about journalism than it is an actual war. Um, there is nothing, the president, and it's not a big role, but 
the president, there is nothing remotely Trump or Biden like about him. Nothing that they were trying to say there. Uh, I think it it's there's no real world politics. And I think that was actually kind of smart. You can dig for stuff. There's a couple like throwaway comments if you want to get in there, like disbanding the FBI and stuff. I've heard people say, but like it's overall, there's no real world politics in this movie. It's about journalists, journalistic integrity. You know, how would you handle a situation like this? It felt real. Um, you know, it's, it's, it felt like if it happened, it might look a lot like this. Uh, I thought it was really immersive. Um, and it, it makes you think like, that's the thing. If you just made like evil Biden or evil Trump villain, real world politics, everybody would just kind of walk out like that and just feel like he got hit over the head with another throwaway political movie. And I think that's what a lot of people wanted. They, you know, they would have bitched about it, but a lot of people were looking for that. So they're saying this movie had nothing to say. It absolutely had something to say. It's, it's war. It has nothing to say about politics. That's the, the, what they want. Well, it's about war. Everybody loses. Like if something like this happened and it's really bizarre because I know a lot of people on all ends of the political uh, spectrum that like almost root for something like this. And I'm like, everything that you love would change if something like this happened. It would just it be a dystopian when? <clears throat> well, maybe. I mean, I can't say it won't happen, but when but I I just watching it, I think this was so much better than just some you know action movie that I think maybe some people wanted. Now, I think the action at the end especially was thrilling. Uh, again, it felt realistic. Think, see, this is where I, I'm kind of like shocked. You didn't think it was really on the nose? Like, you didn't know exactly what was going to happen? No, I, I mean, thought it was super obvious. And I'm trying not I to mean, say what specific, if we're talking about one thing, I th the I whole mean, movie if, is set up to do one thing. If you're talking about, well, there's two big things at the end. I mean, I guess those events aren't... They're telegraphed. Necess they're they're necessarily shocking, but yeah, they're, and they're telegraphed. Like that's it's the whole structure of any picture like this with the <laughs> protege and the, it, it's it. I that's the one thing I was like this. I know exactly where we're going, but I I enjoyed the ride. I can see, I guess, what you're saying, uh, and I'm trying not to be um, super explicit on what exactly. I'm hoping that you know exactly what I'm talking about. I still think it's a pretty complex movie, um, and. Anybody that's like saying this is hitting you with some message, it's not there. Like it just isn't. I, I would call it out if it did. Uh, but I, I now I have a complaint. It, it, I don't. Well, before you do the complaint, I do want to say I feel like it's going out of its way to not be political. And they might have gone a little bit far with that by having Texas and California team up. Like that felt like a specific move to like, all right, if we do this, it becomes science fiction. I, I understand that. I it, spent two hours with now, a Texan, and I I know the difference. <laughs> I've also talked though to people like, if it if something like that happened, if California and Texas, if it was a resource war, they could that there would be enough of a population there that they could pretty much like probably wipe everything out see i think the know? problem that was the problem they wanted this movie to be texas and california versus new york and florida it would have been a fucking hell of a war that would have been <laughs> if those two are connected yeah. we're connected to the, the... <laughs> and That's i don't the know sequel. <laughs> i get in one way it's like doing that might be unrealistic because there are like vague references to real world stuff like antifa they're very throwaway comments and again they don't take a position it's just they acknowledge that that exists so uh ben Grimm, gen z are already saying they won't go to war for anything i i i tend to agree i think a lot of people and they tackle that in this uh this too like the references to uh kaylee spaney's parents like it's like they're just pretending like nothing's happening on a farm 
Like, I mean, we probably, as long as the internet stayed on, we'd just be doing our podcasts and going well, it's on. It's very like, simple. Normal. We just unload the prisons and be like, hey, go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no more blockbusters or any video stores to raid, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I would get the leather chaps and like try and like. I it's going to be a bunch do. of old fucking white men who want to go fight for this country. <clears throat> Caesar's going to be on the front lines. <laughs> Those Caesar's are John Connor, Todd. He's gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna fight the machines, Dad. Uh, but no, I mean, like. Again, I think the reactions to this movie are kind of also interesting to me. At least if you if you've seen it, I guess you know maybe you see something else. But um, I know a lot of people that haven't seen it and just have their minds made up what it is. <laughs> you know, Ben Grip said, "Yeah, the woods you can't <laughs> run a mile talking about how they're going to fight." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <sighs> I, I mean. It's a movie about war. I think there's a lesson there for like everybody. It, it's more, um, of a, a, more of a movie about war photographers. Exactly, journalism. Yeah, you know that's. I I thought the scene. Um, this isn't really giving anything away, but where they, well, let's just say, see people suffering, and they're just there to take the picture. Yeah. Like they could probably do something about it. But that's not what that's not what a reporter does. That's yeah, and I I couldn't do that. I mean, if I see somebody being tortured, I don't think I could just sit there. Uh, at least if I had a chance to change it, I guess you know what are you going to do? You're covered by everybody uh, with guns, but um, <clears throat> but you know I, I don't think it was trying to make any like I think they were very careful to just make it like everybody suffers in this. There's a, there's a line I liked with one of the, some, but they were just being shot at. And the, one of the reporters, I can't remember which character, maybe it was Kirsten Dunst asks the guy, it's like, who is he? Why is he shooting at us? And then I, I think he just re responded is like, cause he is like, it doesn't matter who he is. We're here. I, he's shooting at us. Like, I think it was the, the young reporter. I can't think. Of okay. Him. Yeah, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but I, I, yeah, I enjoyed right. that line because it's like, well, you're in it. That's I all guess. we need. We're, that's all you need to know. They're shooting at us, so we're shooting back. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there, there's a lot of characters. Like the president isn't a big part of this. I mean, he's good, uh, you know, just President Nick Offerman. Uh, he's not a big part. Um, always for Jesse Plemons, who's in the trailer. Not a big part. He is good, though. No, he, but he is an important part. I mean, it really, yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah, it seemed like the way the trailer set it up was definitely a different picture. It, it, yeah. It, it, it implied more of an action. This got the got the, got the the Caesars out of, the, out of their house to go watch it. But I don't <laughs> think they got what they wanted. <laughs> That's the thing. You you didn't find it thrilling at the end, uh, you know the white, you know just this big epic battle. Oh, no, I, like I, I no, I I no I did like I said I really liked the film. I just thought like mm -hmm. the the ending beats, and I'm not. I, I I just thought it was you could see that what exactly was going to happen, like for the characters, the two female characters. The that Caesars was, wanted like a White House down or Olympus has fallen sort of thriller. <laughs> Uh, but you know we wouldn't be talking about it if that's what it was. Uh, nothing against that those movies, just. Um, but no, I, I really like the road movie aspect. Some people are criticizing I, Kirsten Dunst, but I thought she was like a war weary journalist. Like she's seen some shit at that point. What are they? Uh, what are they? Uh, what? That's um, what are they complaining about? I mean, for her. Just they thought she was wooden, and I'm like, I think she's just somebody that the character makes sense. She's war. She's just her emotions are turned off. You would have to be at that point. It's like somebody that's actually been to war, uh, or not even just that. Somebody that you know, a surgeon. You know, you you almost have to just turn your emotions off. Doesn't mean they weren't there. I thought she was very realistic to how that character would be. Well, I, uh, 
are, are these young people saying this? They don't understand how to hold their emotions. And so that might be kind of hard for them to deal with. I've tried to specifically look at different criticisms of the movie. Uh, I didn't even catch it, to be honest, but th there's some line about disbanding the FBI and they're like, they're, that's a Trump thing. Uh, and <laughs> I was like, I, I don't, it wasn't a major plot point. I didn't even catch it. Uh, and, and there are things that kind of set it in this world. Like, like I said, um, I, I'm not looking a 24 released the map, but they're talking about like uh, Maoist Portland or something, maybe hinting that China has, some influence or control on a portion of the country. There's some lines there with Jesse Plemons that you could just take as racism, but you could also take it as like there's other outside forces that are kind of in in the battle somewhat, which there probably would be. I mean, if yeah, you're gonna have militias and everyone, yeah, the, the and especially if it, it yeah. Obviously, you know, a bunch of yeah, militias are going to form, and you would have the the worst of the worst uh, without on with whatever political. I'm going to make the same complaint I do as every purge movie. Those soldiers would have definitely tried to <laughs> try to sleep bandit them women. I'll just say it that way. No, yeah, they don't go too graphic on probably how it would be. What up, Indy? Yes. Thank you, thank you. Live from China. Good to see you, Indy. Uh, I really like this one. It made me think. It was thrilling. Uh, I want to watch it again, which is, I say all the time, the hallmark of a great movie. Uh, let's see. The other scene at the gas station where Lee uh, bargains for, ga for gas. She offers gas. She offers cash first. Then says three hundred dollars Canadian. Then the guy says, "Hell yeah! What do you make of that? Did I miss the scene where people were fleeing to Canada, or Canada was the financial capital?" Well, I, I don't know. It, it's as well, simple as the dollar was so weak to compare it, to the Canadian yeah. dollar that the yeah you know we don't get the amount, but three hundred dollars Canadian could be a thousand American. All we know in this in this time, it would be like American money. Probably how far that would go in like. Ukraine right now. Oh wait, here, you, you know. Wait, hold on. Ben has this. Some of the Western dudes wearing Hawaiian shirts, which is notorious uniform for a certain group. Yeah, I mean, again, you can pick at it. I don't think this movie was code for anything. I, see, personally. there's some real world things in there. I mean, that's going to happen. You know, yeah. but it's if you're looking to make this into a political film, you're trying to make it into a political film. There's, there's, I don't think they're hiding something so deep. You have to dig with the fucking fine tooth comb to find. That's not how we do it in America. We hit you over the fucking head like you're a fucking idiot. They did not do that. <laughs> this is not that kind of film. Yeah. And, and like, I get like, okay, obviously this wasn't made by like some hardcore conservatives, but like, I really don't think any, it, it wasn't black Christmas is uh, the last black Christmas is the measuring stick. For a movie that just tries to hit you in the face with obnoxious political messaging, this didn't do that at all. I really think anybody can enjoy it. Uh, As Ben points out, he's a UK he a director. UK. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I get it. Like, uh, there's a lot of questions I have about this world. I do think that they could have come up with a way that it wasn't california and texas. I, I like that it was california texas because that that lets you yeah that, that was fine yeah. it could be a it, that also could be an alliance of i don't know convenience because you could essentially take over that entire half of the country uh Steve says, how excited were you with the Maxine trailer? I waited to watch it, was hoping it would show in there, so I was very excited we got to see it on the big screen. Yeah. Uh, Chris, I would say so. I think you'd like it. There's there's nothing, like, it's not implying that, in fact, it shows atrocities from everybody, you know, and you don't know what they're, like, you don't know how it broke down. You don't know, like, what did they, I mean, there's, you know, you've got the uh, DC side where it is implied that they did uh, bomb 
uh, American citizens. You know, you're seeing you're seeing a lot. It, it, the the overall message is war sucks. <laughs> you know, if you, if you let this happen, if you root it on, everybody loses. So, I mean, I would say that that and journalism because it's very much a movie. About I will say it was a shitty remake, though. No Captain America, no fucking Iron Man. Kind of bullshit. Uh, it's a lot better than that crap. <laughs> I tell you, though, when I was trying to find graphics, for, I was like, fuck, every time I search Civil War, everything was the other fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, Indy, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense. They just don't spell all that out. I mean, you know that, you know, they're getting revenge for the president bombing people, but why did that happen? They don't need to get into the details because it's more the fact that it happened. It's something that's on everybody's minds right now. You know, a lot of unrest right now. So I don't know. I don't think you had to spell it out. I don't think you had to be like Texas started it or New York started it or whatever mm. to me. Uh, Ben, I got flashbacks, not due to the shooting, but just the sounds of the big trucks and hummers. I can imagine that. Um, Hopefully it, you didn't see it in Dolby, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, great. Uh, well, no, it was only an IMAX, but still, that's a good sound system. But yeah, yeah, the, sa the sound, everything, I just... And I love road trip movies, too. Uh, so, yeah, I felt like this is probably it's no devil's less... rejects, but it is a great road picture. <laughs> oh, can you imagine just like throwing uh, the fireflies <laughs> fire fire. into, <laughs> into this scenario? <laughs> I mean, all right, you, just... <laughs> you got Bill Mosley. It's the goddamn Canadians. They did it. <laughs> Having a rant. <laughs> uh but yeah so hopefully you guys check it out hopefully you enjoy it um i don't know who would start the shit who would start the shit todd it would have to be like uh what's like a state that would probably instigate it all i'm gonna say maine orc i'm gonna yeah. say maine it's gonna be texas or florida <laughs> it's one of those two yeah I don't know. I'm going to say Maine's behind it all. Uh, but I thought it was a fantastic movie. I really think it was. I really liked it. I thought it hit all the notes. Uh, it was bugging me, the one reporter. Uh, he was on that Narcos show. Uh, Which I think reporter? He was I can't think of the character's name. I'm sorry off the top of my head because I saw it in theaters. And you um, don't want to tell me the brown one or the black one. So <laughs> the older gentleman or the younger the younger gentleman, gentleman Tad. <laughs> the one who looked like he'd be on Narcos, motherfucker. <laughs> well, he was on Narcos. I recognized him, motherfucker. God damn I just it. wanted to see if he'd say it. <laughs> <laughs> or that's what started it. Like Texas just blew up the lobster supply. We could just do the main version. Just you, you know, go and kidnap happens, Stephen King. All the avocados hostage. So fuck you. <laughs> you imagine the militia breaking in and just dragging Stephen King around. You could like bring it into the horror community. Tell them more. You know, Vermont just argues that they make better maple syrup. There you go. That's the uh, that's what starts it all. But uh, anyways. I loved it. I'm a five. Um, I'm not that that high yet. I'm not. I'm a four and a half with with room to go, grow. Um, I think it's a really good picture, but I, I'm not quite five. Not quite a five. Okay, that makes sense. That's a great uh, rating, anyways. But, and that's uh, only because I kind of like I, to me the actual story, not like all the stuff. It was like kind of a little too odd. I would have liked to not expect that. That's it. I mean, it was hard, not, but that's the story they were telling. There was no way around that. I mean, that's from the moment it was, yeah, going to happen. It's one of those storytelling beats. What are you going to do? What if there's a split between Ben and Jerry Orc? Like, Ben is like hardcore, like MAGA, and Jerry's like just like super left wing. And that's yeah. like what starts it. It's like a fight over the ice cream empire. All right, let's go ahead. Let's let's go ahead with I'm, our next. Game. I'm booking gold, Ted. Dan, 
I'm booking gold. Ben and Jerry is split. It's like ice cream civil war. No okay. more Jerry Garcia. Like he's like saying, like, I came up with Jerry Garcia. You can suck a dick, Jerry. Like, it's a good movie, Tad. Why don't you sell my humor, Todd? I'm hilarious. Because I didn't think that I, I I can't get excited over an ice cream war. That's fine, Todd. I bet everybody in the chat's laughing their ass off at the my ice cream war idea, but that's okay. You fight over stupid things like streets in California. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So next up we have uh yeah, model house uh from writer director Derek Pike. And in this one. Five swimsuit models are staying in a secluded house after a photo shoot and are then held hostage by intruders. The models must fight to survive and uncover the sinister intentions behind the intruders. Uh, and the movie follows these models as they document their vulnerable location for their millions of social media followers. Ty, you want to guess if I like this movie? I'm going to guess... You loved this film. It's a well, five-star war for you. You are incorrect, Todd. I fucking hated this fucking movie. Um, whew. So it... God damn it, Ben! This... <laughs> Could have warned us. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they poison the maple. They throw the maple syrup into the ocean. Like, fuck you, Vermont. God damn it. Orc will lead. The, Orc's the John Connor in that scenario. Ben uh, as Sc Scout Taylor Compton, isn't it correct? Yes, she is. Yeah, so did you she not is. See this yet, Ben? I thought you did. You don't have to wait for him to answer. You okay, I thought you were waiting for an answer. I'm sorry. Well, I'll see, uh, in, the, I'll see in the chat. <laughs> Let's stop at the phone. Uh, this movie made me want to go watch Girl House again. I would have had more fun with that. Uh, or Lucky Bastard. Or some, you know. So, I mean, the problem with this movie, number one, we open with a really bad CG kill with the car. Uh, I don't mind. This is not a horror movie. I guess you would call it a home invasion thriller, I suppose. It's, how but I it, it's it. presenting itself as a horror movie. It's marketed as a horror movie. For all intents and purposes, it's a horror movie. It's not, but it's it's also like essentially a comedy for a good it's not funny like i didn't laugh one time i don't think it's supposed to be a comedy i think you're supposed to be getting to know and relate to the characters well i definitely did not do that uh they well, all kind didn't... of have the acting talent of you know adult film stars and that is disrespectful to legends like tt boy and ron jeremy they do not act like any porn stars I know. <laughs> the whole thing, it was like Instagram model politics. Like, I'm listening. That dialogue just kept going on and on forever. I don't care that you're not getting the acting jobs because your tits are, like, not big enough. or Like, it just kept going on like that. I'm like, I'm not being in it. I'm a specific kind of viewer. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the nakedness, which never really comes. There's like one side boob shot, which is annoying. Not quite side boob. It was like no, yeah, but you get full boob. titty. You, you, you get, get full titty. titty yeah, Dan's always like, trying to disquit. No. no, and you get a couple thong shots. The girls are good looking, but like none of these characters are interesting. They're well developed. Like I know what each of their their. But Dan, uh, to be fair. Are. All these kind of women in real life would not be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry, okay. social influencing whores, I'm women. God damn it. <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all are kind of vapid. From yeah, very vapid and yeah, uninteresting. Um, like there's like that, like the plus size model who's like going off about not being a plus. Top. And I was like, okay, I'm. This is not interesting to me. I don't and care. I, and, about I, and, you. and the fact they called her a plus size model, Jesus Christ, that bitch was tiny. <laughs> <laughs> she was a normal sized human. <laughs> um, I, I'm not gonna like reveal like what the intruder's motivation is. I'm not gonna spoil that. But once I, they they break in, that's kind of revealed what they're trying for. I like the plan. I'm taking. 
<laughs> it's, it wasn't a bad plan. I will give him that. I could poke some holes in how that would work, but um, then the movie just drags on. It's it's like we're watching these like ditzy characters we don't care about try and outsmart their captors, and it, I'm sorry for a good portion of it. It felt like they were trying to make a comedy to me. <laughs> but it's not scary it's not funny it's not thrilling it's just i wanted this movie to end so bad uh even scout taylor compton i'm gonna be honest is not very good in this i mean she's sorry maybe. i know kruger's listen i don't think she's ever really been that good i think she's been right for certain things she's been in a few good movies yeah i don't think she's a good actress i'm not say i don't don't think she's a great actress she's she's that yeah, I mean, she was okay as Screw white trash. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, she was okay as white trash. Lori Strode. Yeah, I get it. And if you want to, okay, I she's cute. I'm not saying she's not pretty. She's just not a good actress. Um, this movie was making me mad. This was one of those ones. I don't think it was that long, but I felt like it was four hours. I did not care for this one at all, but I mean, am I being too harsh, Todd? I just don't know. Who I, I I'm going to tell you the truth. I fell asleep watching this last night. Yeah. Like I was like, <laughs> and I, and I was like, I think I got enough. Do I, do I need to watch? This? And I, I fucking, so today I woke up and I watched it again. <sighs> so I had to watch this thing almost twice. It's not good. It wasn't any better. The parts I rewatched either. I, I I like I and honestly is, I think is there I, any suspense? No, but uh, no laughs. Is, I don't I don't dislike the story. I just don't think it was cast or executed in a way that I enjoyed it. I mean, it needed to be a little more sleazy. There's a like I like the idea here. I just didn't like the execution, unfortunately. I will say Priscilla Ortiz, who played Carla, if she had shown me something like they would have to get at least one star uh but she doesn't the girls are good looking i'm not like crapping on them but the characters weren't interesting and I, yeah, I, I, it's just yeah. lame that's the worst thing because home invasion stuff should be suspenseful but they also kind of downplay these these the intentions like i didn't feel like a lot of the characters were even in danger uh you know that there was this awful threat there that they were going to get hurt uh it was a slog just lame ass movie uh obvious red herrings and uh yeah that's all i gotta say about it todd i did not like it and i am giving this one a zero well i can't give it a zero because it was still yeah it was in focus and it was watchable i'm gonna give it a one um, I did like, like I said, I did like the, the idea. I just didn't like the execution. More boobs. <laughs> like, know what you're making. I know somebody's going to see his reviews like these fucking pigs, but I'm like, know what you're making. Maybe other Instagram. I was excited. Model house. Like, and, like I was excited for model house. Now, and this why were you, thing. why were you excited? Cause God. I was like, is this a sequel to girl uh, house? <laughs> you thought you were gonna get boobs, and they like. I, well, I thought it was gonna. Be, I was hoping it was a sequel to Mod or Girl House. Model Go House, watch Girl, Girl House. House. Girl House is a lot of fun. You, you don't tell and, me. I'm and lucky, lucky bastard. bastard. Lucky bastard's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. That's I kind of like that uh, F a fan concept that they did for for Lucky Bastard because. Uh, I'm going way back to the 90s. You may know this name, but you remember Pussy Man? I do remember Pussy Man. I don't know that he was the very first, but he started like doing those movies where they'd bring like a fan in. Uh, was that before or after such such bring such fan invited event as the world's biggest gangbang? Oh, that was before. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna say not much before, because that would have been like 96, 97. 97, I believe, or 96 and 97. They did a few of those, but no, this was like 90s Pussy Man. Like, I'm not a gonzo yeah. guy. I wanted a plot, I wanted story, I wanted production values. 
you didn't get a lot of that in the nineties. If we're being honest, no, there was, you, you just, there was a lot of the Brad Armstrong strong stuff. There was there, there was stuff now. And it's funny because I look back on it more fondly than I did. So at the time I was annoyed it wasn't on film, but how many of those gang, da- gang bangs did you attempt to get into Dan? None, but I will tell an adult film story on Patreon. I might have Never. said it before, but yeah, we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it. I don't mind. Next uh, Patreon. But next Patreon, whatever that is. Um, so yeah, zero one. Don't watch Model House. Go watch Gr- if you haven't seen Girl House or Lucky Bastard. There's your uh, suggestions. There's one other one, and it's escaping me at the moment. But uh, yeah. All right, what do we got up? One next? more before we have uh, Kruger. All right, one more till Kruger. Unless he wants uh, on now and he just gives me a thumbs up. But I see his camera flickering. <laughs> Is that a middle or a thumbs up? Oh, okay, I'll bring him up. Well, Kruger can hang out while we talk. Okay, cool, cool. You're welcome. Hey. What up, Kruger? Hi, everybody. A- a- anything about uh, Scout Taylor Compton? <laughs> just that you guys are on crack. Like, you just killed it in what? What was it? A creature stirring last year? Fuck off. Yeah. I like that movie. I I think that was just a good movie. I don't think she's great in it. Like she was fine. good in it. <laughs> yeah, I said well, it's a good, good movie. Good. That's that's her, her ceiling. Uh, and I said she played white trash Lori Strode fairly well. I'm gonna watch the Houston 500 looking for a hat man. You know, we had actually talked before the show because we had previously discussed do, doing a watch along to the world's biggest gangbang too, but then we decided not to. Um, good on and, that. And now we extra decided not to because we don't want to get sued. <laughs> <laughs> don't need, dude. Don't trigger, don't trigger me. I'm about to fucking oh God, shit true. on some bitches. <laughs> I don't know, but that's well, bitches so, be I, stupid. I, that's all. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't. Even, I got like a, I got a like from one of them on like a super old post to us. I'm like. <laughs> We love women. Yeah, well, well one of features. one of a, one of them fucking just put the nail in the coffin. If I ever see that fucking, oh, ooh. that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so I don't even remember where we were at now. What we're about to talk about monster match. The was monster there? match. Did what you, you yes. Yeah. Uh, it was a graveyard smash, Kruger. <laughs> Really? Ethan laughed at that one. I got you. I laughed. I, I, yeah, well, did. Yeah. I do not laugh at your jokes. Just your yeah. stupid Just ben half Jerry of Civil War was dumb. No, no selling me like a warrior pedigree. I, pad. Dan, you, I don't fake laugh for you. You, you say something funny, I will laugh. Well, there you go. Thank you, Ted. I thought that was funny, and I appreciate you. Start fake laughing at all the Dan stupid jokes. Anyways, you just moving got on. Tony Atlas. <laughs> wow, what a great act that would have been with Tony Atlas. That would that's money. Todd, book Tony Atlas, please. Let's make it happen. Maybe a foot gimmick. You, you know, could just you could just like make him like real life Tony Atlas. I got like it. Just... Tarantino's last film, the Tony Atlas story. Done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Best best feet obsessed movie ever made. Let's do the mash. Uh, from writer director Jose Prendez, we have Monster Mash. So, Dracula, Wolfman, or they call him Werewolf, and the Invisible Man must work together to stop Dr. Frankenstein from creating an unstoppable monster made up of their parts. Uh, they also they don't put over, uh, we also get a zombie character who's not really on the mission with them. Uh, and we also get um, Ramses, the mummy, which I was a little surprised. Just call him the mummy, you know, like you, that's not taken. I thought even Wolfman you could use, but I guess not. So he's the werewolf. Uh, all right. So uh, Asylum, uh, Jose Prendez, of course, has done a lot of work for them before. Uh, you, you don't really have particular expectations going into an asylum movie sometimes they hit and they're very fun sometimes they do not i had a lot of fucking fun with this todd i'm just gonna guess that they uh 
decorated Michael Madsen's living room to be the set. So okay. Can... <laughs> so Michael Madsen sucks, but he sucked in a funny way. It was like watching, I mean, he's he plays Dr. Frankenstein. And it's like Dr. Frankenstein if he was a drunk hobo from New York City. Like these, it, it doesn't fit, but it didn't hurt the movie. It was these are the kind of roles movie. like it would be perfect if Joe Spinell started. <laughs> yeah, drunk out of his mind, played Frank. Just Spinelli. sweating. Be a ten times better movie, but if we don't get that. We get Michael so, Madsen, but same idea. I'll get that out of the way. Michael Madsen. I felt like he was trying a little bit with this one, a little more than normal. So I'll give him that. Uh, not exactly somebody I'd cast as Dr. Frankenstein. but uh, And Michael Madsen also, 20 years ago, was uh, he played Detective Harker in Marcus Nispel's Frankenstein, which was based on the Dean Koontz Frankenstein stories uh, that – it was going to be a backdoor pilot into a TV series, I believe, for USA. I could be wrong on the network. Uh, so he's played around with Frankenstein before. Parker Posey was in that. I was kind of excited, and unfortunately, it didn't make it to to we series. Don't... But it's a DVD that's easy to find. We don't get backdoor pilots really anymore. No, not anymore. That era is just kind of done. But But it's out there if you want to see it. Um, all right, I got a lot to praise in this one. I like the classical, practical makeup. Uh, they shot this on like studio sets. I thought it really felt more authentic than anything in the dark universe. It was bigger uh, than I, mean, I expected. Yeah, I think the scale was was pretty big. They make good use of the tiny budget. Uh, the cool classic sets. I like the old school makeup. Um, I popped like a motherfucker for the fright break. Uh, just doing an homage to William Castle's Homicidal from uh, 1961, I believe. And I just loved, I love that so much. I've always if, said you you can be a cheap B movie, but when you, that feeling that this is, this guy that made it is one of us, uh, it put a big fucking smile on my face. And I thought the werewolf looked great. Um, now Michelle think, Bauer. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. With the fright break, I think that's what would have lost Kruger because everything after that. <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to it. I'm not saying it's perfect, but um, I was getting the a, reckoning vibes, Dan. If if you're a fan of Universal monsters, Hammer horror, uh, any of that, like it almost felt at times like you remember uh, um, the uh, full moon movies uh that they did with uh jr bookwalter like frank i keep forgetting that. yeah frank you can you could have just you could have honestly just went with the creeps because it, it yeah it is very that that's the and maybe minus the, minus the sleaze there's no Min nudity yeah minus the sleaze and the size that it, it kind of had was that like the it, way the creatures felt in it it felt it, it worked if you remember the League of uh, Extraordinary Gentlemen movie, like I this was almost them. the catering budget, and I think this was more fun <laughs> than that. Fuck you! Like, I love that movie. <laughs> I, I don't dislike it. I'm just saying. I think this just felt. Sean Connery is a gem. I love Sean Connery. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, the Dracula dude looked like the Riddler guy from Gotham. Found out that guy's playing Chevy Chase in an SNL movie. Uh, <laughs> That's cool. So his name's Ethan Daniel Corbett. I thought he was great as Dracula. Now, the monsters are essentially the good guys going against the human villain in Dr. Frankenstein and uh, his monster, who he's a dick to. Uh, so, you know, you were, you we're not seeing Dracula or uh, Werewolf, as they call him, doing any dastardly deeds necessarily and, this is like avengers of universal monsters and what was the <laughs> what was the frankenstein's monster's name dan boris i was fine with that i thought he was good um this is lighter stuff like like i said it's got that kind of not moonbeam or anything it's still like an r an r-rated movie but 
got that kind of feel. It really did feel like something that Full Moon might have done uh, yeah. back in the day. Uh, and I I really love this. Uh, Ramsey's The Mummy. I just really appreciated all the makeup. Uh, I, Michelle Bauer pops up here. Once again, much like Jose Prendez's last movie, though, it's under makeup. Uh, which was not her. I mean, I think she just voiced it, but she's like the zombie character. Uh, Todd, I fucking love this movie. This is actually one of the best Asylum movies. There was just something about it. Now, after the fright ba break, we do get like some Van Helsing level CGI. Okay. Dude, I thought it, I thought they brought Krampus in for the finale. <laughs> the the, the even shit on Van Helsing for that time it wasn't that bad. No, but yeah, but for 2024 it would be. Yeah, but the, I still like it, that movie though. Fuck off. You might like this Kruger. Honestly, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I he will like it up to the fright break once he sees that CGI looking like fucking. <laughs> Fighting a giant bat because Dracula can like go kaiju bat, I guess. Um, but I even that I was having fun. Oh, with. It, it was fine. It was laugh. Like I like that one with the city shitty CGI. So it, it yeah, I'm laughing at it, but it, I still had fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, ah. But there's no real way you were going to do that part practical, anyways. So it didn't it didn't take away my fun at all. Uh, cast was game if asylum smart they'll try and do a follow-up to this it seems like they they were there you know with our tag and stuff were, with their building towards it which i'm fine with um yeah i think dan liked it a little bit more than me i had a really good time with it um, i'm not gonna suck it off like dan i'm looking forward to more i i think it's a little bit more dan's being a little bit more forgiving um but yeah I think it's I, I think it's worth checking out. I just don't I don't know. Dan, Dan could be sucking it off and give the exact same rating as me. So Dan, what are you gonna give it? <sighs> you, you want me to go? It's first? a it's a B movie. You go ahead. I'm a three. It's a B movie. You know that going in. If you hate asylum and you just think everything they do is shit, then you're probably not that kind of fan, but it's it's <sighs> I'm four. I got to give it at least four for for what it is. I just had a lot of fun with it. If you like some of the things I said, you know, like the book Walter, uh, full moon stuff, the creeps, you know, not exactly. Again, this is something you could probably watch with your kid minus a little minor gore. Uh, it doesn't, you know, yeah, it wasn't it's not a gore film. So. It worked for me, man. I had a blast with it. You can tell that Jose Prendez loves the Hammer and Universal horror classics. It came through. Surprise, surprise. I really dug it. So there you go. There you go. Uh, so moving on to our next film. Sorry, organizing my notes. Uh, that Kruger saw. So we'll get to talk this one with Kruger. Arcadian, uh, which one moment while I pull up the synopsis, uh, the newest, so the newest Cage offering in the horror genre, <laughs> the newest Nick Cage film, uh, from director Benjamin Brewer. Arcadian is about a man played by Nick Cage and his twin teenage sons, Max Jenkins and Jaden Martell, who must fight to survive in a remote farmhouse at the end of the world. The challenges of growing up are made worse by the terrors awaiting the boys and their father after the sun has set. So, right. Kruger, you're fresh from the theater. Uh, what did you think? This is very much by your like a by the books survival horror movie. Uh, you can see there's obviously like heavy inspiration from stuff like Quiet Place and shit like that, but. The one thing I'll say about this movie that it gets done right is that it has one of the most interesting and just batshit crazy creatures I've seen on screen in a very long time. Um, like, seriously, I, I don't even know how to describe these fucking things, but there's, cer <laughs> there's certain, like, aspects to them that are so otherworldly that, like, it just, they're very hard to describe, but that's, like, 
a really big uh they like, got that like rattlesnake well, thing. well, well, well no, the like at one so like they they have very like wolf like but i'm not gonna spoil it completely but like you kind of really even can't but they have like wolf bodies but then like the way their necks their necks come out like zigzags and shit and mm-hmm. then their fucking teeth chatter like uh like uh those wind up teeth and then all of a yeah. sudden they expel the organs on top. Like it's some of the weirdest shit I've ever seen in my life. But uh, so that's what makes this movie great. I think is just, it has such a strange creature uh, design in it. And I think that's what like is going to probably make it memorable to most people. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're not into creature features or just this type of movie, if you didn't like the Quiet Place movies, I don't see you liking this, but I like all that stuff. And it gave me something like just really fucking kind of blew my mind with how weird and bizarre they went with the creature designs and just making it something different, which is like they could have easily made it werewolves or, you know, something by the numbers, but they went full blown in another realm when it came to the creature design. And I appreciate that a lot. I want to rewatch this movie too, uh, because uh, I wasn't having the best time when I was watching the movie uh, with other shit going on. So I, I need to rewatch it. Cause I think I'm going to enjoy it more the se- a second time. And also I, I just want to put over Nick cage does a great job. Like I think all the acting solid. I don't think it's weak. It, I mean, it's definitely not Academy award winning, but for a lower budget, shutter picture i think it's acceptable from most people and i think nick cage does a great job uh other than the fact that he isn't on as on screen as much as i wanted him to be but it is what it is it's whenever more of the brothers there, he, yeah but whenever he was there it was good and i also like it, it's a very human story and like something uh, again it's very basic but i also found it entertaining especially just with seeing how a family would interact in a post-apocalyptic world uh what did ben say do you like how they don't really explain how they got to the po- this point i mean it's kind of like i i feel like it's kind of like hinted at that it may be some nuclear stuff but uh i do like that they leave it ambiguous i do just like that the creature lore is completely ambiguous too um Although, like, with, like, stuff like A Quiet Place, I am kind of excited about the new one because I'm hoping we're finally going to get some answers to those types of things. And if Arcadian ever got, like, a sequel, which I doubt it ever will be, but I would like to see the answers to those questions as well. I think that's what sequels are for. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I, I like that. It's, I like just being dropped in the story, and you don't need to... You, you, Let your mind fill it in. Yeah. No. Um, I really love this one as well. Uh, the the creature designs are amazing. Now you don't get a lot of like close glimpses. I think they do a pretty good job. They, like not they show you immediately. They, yeah, uh, not immediately. They, do a bit, they, they give do you a some. Bit, yeah, they yeah. give you some solid shots towards the end. But like, I I was questioning like, are we gonna really like get? to see what these fucking things look like but uh we yeah. i'm glad that they at least gave us some good shots and that weird critters sequence too that was pretty yeah, awesome. yeah we, we <laughs> get a critters also, ball well critters and we ball. also and, and it was similar to uh that movie i brought up earlier creature stirring like the creature in that did the same fucking thing like rolling yeah, around actually, like yeah. porcupine <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I popped for that huge. Oh, yeah, I love this picture too. I thought it was it was a ton of fun. Nicholas Cage is great as always, even if he gets minimal time. Mm-hmm. Um, I know the kid was in uh, Knives Out and It. Well, one of them was. Uh, um, it was Bill Bill from It and Will Robinson from the New Lost in Space were the brothers. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I don't. I so yeah. oh, so I, it I, was so it was Bill. I didn't know that. Yeah, you can still see it. He's getting older, but you can still see it. Will Robinson doesn't look like he did that that series, but Netflix, like it was like two years in between. Um, But Ben points out, like, it's actually scary too. So that scene with the uh, finger stretching through the door, I thought, I was like, holy shit, what are these things? Mm -hmm. Uh, 
the creature design is really elevating this because it's a basic story. Yeah, I mean, there's it doesn't reinvent the wheel as far as you know post apocalyptic and you know creature feature type things. Um, but I love the sort of platypus jaws, whatever the fuck that thing was. <laughs> it was just really cool. Yeah, every, uh, every time it came on screen, I was really trying to focus to to get all the information I could of what it looked like. If you now, here's the thing about this movie, and these this is not so much complaints, but that they are thoughts that entered my mind logically. I towards the end, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, like, there is nothing you could do to reinforce a door that these fucking things could not break through that ramshackle farmhouse. Like, that was one thing I was like, okay, I, I'm just gonna not overthink this. Um, I also felt like how they do eventually kind of adapt. Don't feel like it would take 15 years to figure that out, but I don't know. Cause this takes place like 15 years after the fall. Um, so why is there still usable medicine? You know, there's, there's, there's some things. Uh, I thought the girl looked a little bit too like, well, it, it, you would have grown up almost completely in this. You kind of look a little bit too like well kept. Your hair is too good. There's no. little like tiny. Well, things. the medicine one, I'll explain. Like, yes, even if it's been 15 years, you're still gonna hoard the medicine. Medicine doesn't just stop working on exploration date. It slowly gets weaker over time. But that's just yeah. you don't know how long the FDA says that. Doesn't mean you know it, it may not. It, it's a use by date, just like food with pre preservatives shit lasts forever. So yeah, yeah. That, that's an easy one to explain away. Yeah. They may have been half as potent as they were 15 years ago, but they'd still be some pain release better than none. Yeah, I get that. And these are just minor, minor little things. It's just like when I questioned the door was a big one though. I'm like, how the fuck? I mean, I don't care how well enforced that door is. There's no fucking way that they wouldn't be able to break it down, especially with what we see in the third act, which speaking of, it's a very lively third act when everything is kind of shits hit the fan. Uh, it's fun. Doesn't reinvent the wheel, but goddamn kudos to the uh, the whoever designed the creatures and this is not this director's first time with uh, Nicolas cage he also directed the trust uh which is a heist movie with nick cage and elijah wood and worth seeing um he goes full cage in that one uh there's a if you look at some of those sizzle reels with his big like over the top moments there's one where he's just screaming at elijah wood and it's it's pretty funny uh so Anything else to say about this one, gentlemen? Just uh, go see it if you can in the feeders, because I think it's worth the admission, especially if you're a fan of creature features, because it's something different. Yeah, and you may not have long, because I know it's not a super wide release. How wild is it to see like the RLJE logo? I thought this one was the Shutter. <laughs> I believe it's going to be. Yeah, it's going to be on Shutter. Okay. I thought I because yeah. there was Shutter in the uh, trailer. So yeah. I thought, okay. So. Yeah, but worth seeing in the theater if you can. I think you probably should get on it if you've got yeah. a screening near you, though. All right, that is Arcadian, and we got TV Terror Talk, uh, which we haven't had in a while. Uh, I keep forgetting, though, Chucky, it's not a new season. We're just kind of finishing out. Season two, one. part. Season three. Season three, part two, episode five. There you go. There you go. There you go. So we're getting a half. I don't know if we'll get like season four immediately or how that's going to work. But well, I but remember yeah. Chucky, they, they had a pause because of the strikes. So. Yeah. Um. So I don't think this one's going to. Well, this might be somewhat spoilery if you have. Well, yeah, Chucky. I mean, so, there's a yeah. desk. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So TV Terror Talk. We do talk spoilers, so if you care, this is Chucky. Death becomes her. Uh, You've had you six days to watch it. So. All right. <laughs> Spoiler warnings. Yeah. Yes. Do we have a description, uh, or are we just going to get right into it? I, it. Well, I don't have. So okay. it picks up. I, 
Oh, well, I have the it's... description right in front of me. Oh, go for it. That... Chucky wrestles with his mortality while Jake and Devin take their romance to the next level. <sighs> All right. So I, I would just like to go first and just say I'm getting really go sick of just the story in general. There's mm -hmm. good kills in this episode, but I was very bored this whole fucking thing. And I'm sick of seeing Devin Sawa. I'm like over it. Like, thank God he got killed. But I swear what? to God, if this motherfucker pops up again. <laughs> like, I'm going to lose my shit. He's coming back. How do you know? <laughs> I don't want to see him anymore. Like, I love him as an actor, but fuck, dude. This shit's getting like a little annoying at this point. Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like all the characters have overstayed their welcome at this point, too. Um, Lexi, I still kind of like, but Devin and Homeboy, what's the other guy's name? I uh, uh, Jesse is it or I don't know. I Just, agree. Kill, kill all that, of them. Yeah, like Jake. Jake. Jake, Jake and Devin. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, just both of them. Like I'm kind of just over their characters. I'm a little interested to see what's going to go on with Chucky, but at the same time, like unless he's going to hell and Freddy Krueger is going to fucking face off with him in hell, I, I really don't care. Like I, I, I'm ready for this show to be wrapped up. I, I think it's overstated. It's welcome, and I'm over it. Did you pop at least for fuck you, M3 again? <laughs> that at least yeah. not really, <laughs> not really. Like I was just like, uh, okay. You know why? Because because Kruger's like, now we're not going to get the versus movie. You cocksuckers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I that popped in my head too. But I did pop for him saying Meg three again. That made me laugh. Uh, he's like watching Dead Silence. And he's like, this one didn't even get a franchise. <laughs> Hate watching the other killer doll movies. <laughs> See, that would have been better as a commercial, I think. Yeah. I, I, this story's run out of steam a long time ago. I mean, we, you know, we kind of are up and down because, like, you'll see something cool. You get a great kill. But I could give two fucks about these I kids at this point. Season like, finale. Rick Steiner shows up. <laughs> there you go. Like he's like they're the bringing bounty everyone hunter. else back. <laughs> he can be like the the Stephen Williams character from Goes to Hell. Like he's been tracking Chucky for like all of these years. I don't know how Rick Steiner would feel about those kids, but uh, you know some of the <laughs> some of the WrestleCon incidents with him. But. Uh, <laughs> Holy shit, Ty. We just saved the show. <laughs> Rick would, would you would you enjoy the show if Rick Steiner made it appearance, Kruger? <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, you would, Kruger. You're smiling. Yeah. <laughs> just, to I talk, just to talk to the boys. <laughs> the, the kids just aren't interesting. It's time... I, I've liked things about this show. It's like I said, if you go back, like it's not like we shit on it the whole time. It's just I don't care. I would rather like Fiona Dorif be the focus. Um, a lot of the well, legacy characters, just Alex Vincent, nice guy, not a good actor. He couldn't be the focus. Just give me somebody a little more interesting if you're going to continue with it. Well, I'm sure next week we'll have, you know, the other characters. We tend to. One week then, then the other. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I thought the kill was excellent this week. Um, I, I'm i fine with what it was. Yeah, it was a little too romance heavy for me. Um, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still with it for now. I don't care about these kids' love lives. Maybe I'm just yeah. getting old. I don't know. I, 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 but I do, I do agree with Kruger. Like the boys, I'm over, but uh, Lexi, I still think there's stuff to do with her. Yeah. Like if too. we're going to have Chucky focus on someone, it should be her at this point. I don't care about the boys. The boys, like, isn't, yeah. You could do a shock, like, red wedding type, like, just yeah. he, Chucky kills, like, it, like, fucking everybody at the end of the season. You have to throw him into something completely new, in my opinion. Well, especially if they're going to do another movie and, he, and they've kept continuity throughout everything. That's a good way to solve it. End it, and if he... I mean, I don't know if they do another movie at this point. I, I don't know that it's necessarily going to be Brad Dorif, Chucky, you know, might well, be another. I don't know that they I think the window's closed to do a sequel well, they, to the remake, but yeah, a reboot. Well, but, well there know. they are. There, there were, didn't he already announce that the, the movies he's working on when Kruger? 
I could be maybe. Maybe I'm I could mistaken. have swore he said that he's got a feature ready or coming. They, not, they, they, they mentioned something, but they're also teasing with Chucky versus Freddy right now, too. I don't believe that. <laughs> yeah. The the thing is, I feel like TV a TV show like this might hurt that a little bit because like friend of the show, Christian, and I don't know, maybe he finally went back and watched it. He stopped, he checked out. I don't even think he made it through the whole first season. You know, there's other people I know like that that love Chucky that dipped a long time ago. Um, there's bad, there's good. I, I'm, I'll finish it. Like, I'll see what they do to close. But they've held on to these kids for way too long. They're just not good. I, I don't, I'm not even shitting on the acting necessarily. It's just they're not interesting. They've dragged out that romance angle for way too long i i don't know just let it be yeah done. It, it's funny that i say like i say with the boys every time like they, i'm kind of over them and then they do something interesting so i'm gonna see if they can pull it out this time uh, probably not the best choice of words no. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna see if they can if they they make their story interesting yeah i don't know um i i no more devin sawa I like Devin Sawa. Oh, you know we're getting. Fine. You know he's not done. You know we're getting at least one more Devin I'm Sawa. Sh- I'm, I'm sure we him. are. He's a. I don't think Devin Sawa is bad, but he's not such a dynamic actor that I need to see him play twenty fucking roles. It's become he, a gimmick now, so yeah. I'm he, just, yeah, I'm just like, give me a, an interesting new actor to throw in there. You know, mm-hmm. like call up Tony Todd or somebody you know you want like a horror name to do something i i don't know well it is killing him like three times in the series kind of a final destination homage because death is chasing him still there you go but in closing a decent kill and a couple funny one-liners does not make a show so it's it's getting close like i'd say end this too uh unless you got one hell of a follow-up and take out all of the current uh, major characters. Ben Grimm never pull out. Always see it through. Hey, uh, hey, same I know day. quite a few parents would disagree, but... <laughs> uh, Vicente, the Lexi kid, is the only one I like of the three after season one. Now, she started off as quite the bitch. Oh, my right? God. Dan fucking... His hate was, like, so intense... The stuff he said off air was so much worse. That's fucked up. Dad, you did not like that. They guy. did deny us a kill, though. Like, I really thought, I was like, man, this would be more fun if Chucky just, like, fucking, like, ripped her face off or something. But I don't know. They made a turn. I can't say I like her. She's more interesting than the other two. But I'm, I don't know. Hey, Todd, uh, I just got some bullshit sent to me. I don't know if you could pull it up and show everybody. <laughs> is no, it wrestling no. bullshit or yeah okay i'll pull it up but i just got this shit sent to me and i don't well, i we were, gonna, even, we were I, gonna talk about your match anyway yeah we well i i, I haven't first. i haven't even opened it no, no, but um, um well we should wrap this up real quick I'll, while i get it ready yeah because yeah. we are coming to the end on this i don't have much else to say cool kill at the end that's it. A couple. Fun yeah, months. no, they, it w- it was a cool kill, and like that's kind of like what these episodes from the get go for me. That's what keeps me watching is like as long as there's one cool kill per episode. But at the same time, the story I think is just it's kind of run its course for me. I, I want to see it wrapped up in a bow, and let's get Chucky versus Freddy. Let's have Chucky fight Freddy in hell. I can't. I don't know that those two story. go together. Oh, dude, the one-liners versus one-liners, I mean. I guess if you did, like, for the people that like it, like, Freddy's dead Freddy, it might be yeah. funny, but I don't know. <clears throat> Give me what is the difference between Freddy's dead Freddy and all the other Freddy's, Dan? They're all the same. I think it. I think it's very comical seeing a killer doll fight Freddy. Like, that's going to really. Oh, no, no, but you me. said Freddy's dead Freddy, which is very specific is what I meant. There's I'm talking guy. like Freddy killing people with Q-tips, like going full Looney Tunes. That's what that looks like to me. If you told me I had to write that, I'm like, I don't think I can make a 
scary, more horror centric version of that story. Give me Dark. Mm, I don't. Because right. there is a scary Chucky still. Okay, but not not. And here we go. Let's check this out. Would you want to pull up the uh, the promo or the uh, graphic first? I sent it to you too. All right. Yeah. Let's. Let's see. <laughs> Hold up. My bad. <laughs> I thought you were pulling up rest. There's a lot of wrestling drama right nowadays. Like just well, every. Well, well to, earlier today, um, one of my bookings in May, my uh, one of my matches got announced, which is pretty interesting if you followed my career because it's one of my most famous matches. Uh, in a rematch with JD Horror in a under the Crimson Sea death match, which our first one was almost 10 years ago, nine years ago at Sovereign or Slaughter in 2015. Underground and, Empire Wrestling, Sovereign or Slaughter. Yeah, Underground Empire Wrestling, Sovereign or Slaughter. Uh, you can also see that match on IWTV. It's also on YouTube and shit like that. But um, so nine years later, we're having under the Crimson Sea too, and uh, me and JD have both only had uh, a couple of matches against each other. I think in total, what we've had two tags, a one on one, and then a four way or no three. So we've had like five matches together. One of the times we've tagged it, but he's a lot been of blood. Like, yeah, we've <laughs> shed a lot of blood together, and uh, the last time we wrestled each other. I was concussed in the middle of a ring. Yes. And uh, I may have helped him bust. Yeah, you tube. yeah, you helped him bust tubes on my nutsack. Uh, but for those that are wondering what under the Crimson Sea death match is, uh, it involves fish hooks, involves seashells, maybe shark teeth, uh, fishing line, and all types of fucked up shit. So if you uh, want to check out what this entails, there's a highlight video on YouTube. Also, Sovereign or Slaughter and IWTV for Underground Empire Wrestling. But the rematch will be at Crimson Crown Wrestling's uh, Games of Supreme Violence, too. And uh, for those that also followed my wrestling career. Six years ago, I won Crimson Cup 2. Yes. And uh, the number of the beast and me... I think uh, both share something to do special this year. But uh, I got some bullshit sent to me. And, Todd, why don't you pull it up? Because I am going. I don't know, this asshole's been jawjacking me this whole time I've been on the fucking show. Ooh. Uh, Drama! Where do I hit play? Let's see. Oh, we're up here. Can you make it big? <laughs> Because it's a little mm. gotcha. The sea speaks more honestly to those who are willing to drown. Until you've had the courage to lose sight of the shore, you will not know the terror of being forever lost at sea. And the waves of the crimson sea aren't measured in feet or inches, but instead in blood and in pain. We have salt in our blood, in our sweat, in our tears. We're tied to the ocean. Almost 10 years ago, Michael Kruger almost drowned in the sea of crimson, but somehow managed to survive and descend somewhere to its murky depths of death. Now, he chooses to reemerge in a quest for revenge in the games of supreme violence. I almost had to kill you in the last Under the Crimson Sea death match. A match so violent that the SoCal death match scene still talks about it today. On May 30th, I may just finish the job. I'm not taking the man they call a demon in the flesh lightly. By the looks of you, Kruger, I just may need a bigger boat. But make no mistake, nothing is going to stand in front of me and the game's a supreme violence trophy. In 16 years, I've went to the finals of many deathmatch tournaments, and even won the Slave to the Deathmatch in Colorado. But I've yet to take home the big one in my home state of California, 
And that all changes when J.D. Horror makes his return to Crimson Crown Wrestling. I'm not just in it to win it. I'm putting all seven other competitors on notice. You're going to have to fucking kill me to stop me. So Kyle Wilde, you bring out the hooks, the barbed wire, bring whatever you got. May 30th, Crimson Crown Wrestling, Games of Supreme Violence 2, There Will Be Blood. I'm only going to sing this one. If we get everyone to sing it, I'm drunk and I want to go home. Before we've received orders to sail back to Boston. So the only question is Who does the party captain Guy Cool choose? Who will be his monster? Yeah. What is Whoa. he talking about? I don't even know. <laughs> Imagine if the match took place on Guy Cool's boat. Like, remember the King of the Road? Man, like, how fucking cool, stop, like, out stop fucking, team. stop taking away from the match, you cocksucker. What if it starts on the boat? Dan, shut the fuck goes. up. This would be great. Stop booking fucking shit out of our budget, you <laughs> asshole. <laughs> It's going to be bloody. Go back and watch that first yeah, match. We'll fucking see, but uh, I feel like I owe this motherfucker a receipt now, so um, exactly. we'll, uh, we'll see. Make sure to get your tickets for May 30th because uh, it's going to be it's going to be a fucking bloodbath, and uh, he said that somebody may have to kill him. Well, you may fucking see a homicide in L.A. on May 30th, so. I take those fucking words serious. Fucking six years ago, that motherfucker humiliated me in the fucking ring. That's a fucking shoot. So, May 30th, I'm coming back for that shit. There we go. Uh, a lot of bo big body count coming your way. You got the 27th. You're going to take out Mosh Pit Mike. And, uh Yeah. It's going to be a big body count this summer. I'm not even thinking about Mosh Pit Mike, no. Oh. Oh. Shots fired. Shots fired. Uh, but, yeah, no. I'm really excited for this match. You you can watch that on... It will be on... It will be on... Or the or first Crimson Cup match. Sorry, I got to... I gotta pull myself fucking back together here. <laughs> oh, yeah, which, uh, which, which <laughs> one are you asking? Are you asking the, the new one or the original? Yeah, damn. Uh, the original. The oh, original is yeah. on YouTube, and it's also on IWTV. Just go check out Sovereign of Slaughter 1 on IWTV. Okay. And you can also check out, you know, all of UEW's catalog, all of CCW's catalog back on IWTV. So, yes, yes, yes. Um, and be sure to check out our XPW Baptized in Blood coverage and all that good stuff, too, if you're a wrestling fan. And uh, Dark Side of the Ring, which is very popular. <laughs> I was amazed how many people uh, seem to know Chris Colt. I I got, uh, yeah, I learned more about him, you know, than any other person on the show so far. That's like the one I've known the least about. I was really happy with that episode. So. Yes, yes. Um, so check that out. I think there's going to be a lot of cool wrestling stuff coming up. So you don't want to miss it. Uh, did I miss anything news wise? Anything we needed to hit? No. Nope. Okay. All right. All right, guys. On that note, we will see you back here next time. We hope you had fun. Thank you so much. And come again hard. Good evening. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Be there May. Nah, fuck. Yeah, fuck that fucking outro. <laughs> Be there May 30th. Seriously. Fuck all this shit. Be there May 30th. If you're going to fucking witness death in a fucking death match. All right. Good evening. <laughs>